Hey guys, we're in a cold climate house. We have a direct vent fireplace behind me. We have in-floor hydronic heat everywhere in this house. Um, and I wanted to show you what the uh, system that would be like a typical system for a home with hydronic heat looks like. So we're way up in the mountains. We don't necessarily need air conditioning. So we don't have air conditioning, is that correct? No air conditioning in this house, okay. And what that means, if you've seen my other videos about ductwork and like whether ductwork is important or not, is it does have ramifications. So, so first of all, when you walk into the house, you can hear a fan, which is this. And so we hear that some fan is working somewhere and it seems to all be coming from that one register right there, which is, you know, a typical six inch vent probably is feeding that. This room, and there's a crawl space access. So we're gonna go down there in a minute, but first I wanted to show you something else, which is that I was the last couple days in this bathroom and listening to this sound that you can hear if I close the door. So at my parents' house, that sound is actually a sound that you hear in the crawl space all the time. And in their case, it's this like foot massager that my mom always has on. And, it, and so I was like, there's no way that these people have a foot massager. This is clearly some device that's at work in the crawl space below us. So let's go down and have a look. So we can see that there are two fans that are active downstairs. One is an HRV, a heat recovery ventilator, which I normally don't recommend, uh, and radon fan. Both of them are active here. Uh, there is a filter alarm up here. So let's go down and take a look. Okay, so first thing is, this is a crawl space that is unconditioned. We can tell that it's supposed to be outside because there's insulation in the ceiling. That is Knopf Ecobat, by the way. It's brown in color. Um, we like that insulation. That's like the next type. If you weren't gonna do rock wool, that's a little bit more, you can see how floofy it is and you can just kind of like jam it around. So this is a little softer than rock wool, but um, it doesn't off gas a lot of stuff. It doesn't have a lot of additives in it. Okay, so this is a, an exhaust fan that goes from the crawl space to outside. It seems like it's either on a timer and it's not active right now, or it's just not running. And I would bet that second, based on a couple other things that I found down here. This is one of the three ways that you can have this, un, this uh, crawl space meet code. You can either have a, an exhaust fan that goes outside and pulls air from the crawl space to outside, thereby depressurizing the crawl space, making sure that the house doesn't receive air from the crawl space in winter, that it's like depressurized. So we're getting rid of stuff that comes up here from the ground, which might include radon, which we have a radon system we'll look at in a minute. Um, the other two ways are to keep an opening between the house and the crawl space open all the time, like so, or to condition the crawl space directly with a heating uh, vent. So here is something, it says stale air from bedroom hall. That's from way upstairs. And that's a three and a quarter by eight uh, by 10 uh, wall stack that runs all the way up through the house. That's a six inch uh, round duct that's unsealed. So clearly we are pulling air or trying to pull air from the second floor ceiling all the way down here. But would air rather go through all these kind of little gaps and cracks in this vent? or come from the second floor. And that's a question that's important to ask. Okay, so here is our ventilation device. Here is our radon system. Let's take a look at that real quick. Wah, wah. Radon fan is not working. You can see that the pressure inside of this, uh, uh, the pipe is the same as the pressure out here, which is what this little liquid level manometer is telling you. So the radon fan does not work, needs to be replaced. I would wanna know what the radon was. And you can do that with something like an AirThings uh, radon monitor. Okay, here's our Fantec. Now, the way that Fantecs work is that the incoming air comes from the top and goes down through and then gets distributed through the house. So there's the ducts that's going into the house with fresh air, but it's taking a 90, a 90, a 90, a 90, and then another 90 to go up. So that's kind of a lot of duct work. Uh, maybe they could have flipped this thing around or positioned it better. This one then 
should be fresh air coming from outside. Six inch, six inch, going to that thing right there, which is outside on the outside wall. Here is the intake of fresh air, which with this much snow should be that high up on the wall, not down low, and that's good. You can hear it working. Wah, wah. We have a damper. So the way this should be set up is there should be a screen here. This should be missing. So that needs to change. Also, there is no air moving. So there doesn't seem to be much air moving through this thing. And it might be because, oh, first of all, let's look at this. If this is an HRV, which is what the sign says, and we'll look at the label here in a second, then this thing should be uh, have a condensate drain on it. And regardless of whether it has a condensate drain on it or not, it should be plugged somehow. And that's an exhaust. So it's actually drawing air from the crawl space and going up into this machine and being distributed throughout the house. And I don't know if you can see the dust in here, but like this is not a place to draw air from. So, so we've got leakage because of unsealed joints. And also we've got leakage because of this thing right here. When we open this, woo! Okay. Ugh. Wow. That is why we don't have any airflow. So that's actually a pretty cheap filter. This is the um, standard filter that comes with Fantex, which is like a Merv 6 or maybe even a Merv 4, I'm not sure. The incoming fresh air stream, totally clogged. Outgoing stale air stream, also totally clogged. There's no way that there's air flow through this thing. So yes, this is an HRV, and one of the ways you can tell is because this thing is real freaking heavy. So it's made of metal uh, or plastic, but it's got it's got heavier components than the ERV core, and it says cleaning instructions. So we have um, washing, uh, let's see here, once a year or as needed, vacuum and then soak in water. Let me go ahead and take care of that for my buddy. And yeah, we'll clean this stuff out. And then we should be good. All right, so kitchen sink, we're filling it up with warm, soapy water. Maybe a little bit like that. So the directions are printed on this core and I'm pretty sure that a lot of the manufacturers will have this stuff. So first of all, all the cores, ERV and HRV, are washable, from Fantech at least. Um, and it says, for optimum efficiency, vacuum the surfaces, then so, and you can see that there's no, there's not much on this. So we don't need to worry, I'm gonna wipe it down, but vacuuming is probably unnecessary because there was nothing getting through because of the filter. So these should be cleaned four times a year, once every three months, so that this doesn't happen to you. Ew, you just peeled that right off? Yep. Gross. And likewise on the outgoing. So this is what's weird is like, you know, tune in for the home chem uh, mastermind Mondays because it looks like the outdoors is polluted, but also that's coming from inside. This stuff is coming from inside. That's skin flakes and all kinds of stuff. It doesn't stick together quite as well because it's not full of like uh, big dust. It's full of the skin flakes, I guess, are smaller dust. But also we get little spider, spider bits. Spider bit. Pretty awesome. Delicious moments. And this is how you get your fresh air. So this is part of why the uh, carbon dioxide hasn't dropped below 1200 in the house. Um, because of course, when you are just using an ERV, and I'll have more videos about this, when you're just using an ERV to clean the air, you're not taking advantage of scrubbing the indoor air. Instead, what we're doing is just taking air from inside and throwing it in the garbage, which is outside. And you have to do a lot more of it, which is a big energy penalty and also a humidity penalty. If we had an ERV core, which I think is totally doable, I believe that we could get an ERV core to replace this one. You don't have to replace the whole machine. Then you could actually have the humidity be a lot more stabilized inside the house. In winter, it'll be uh, moisture. And in summertime, it'll be, uh, well, not drier here it's going to be super dry outside in the summertime so you'd want it also to be moisture in the summertime but anyway erv core always does better with that even in cold climates don't let people tell you it's cold climates this and warm climates that it doesn't make any sense anymore 
<laughs> Maybe in the, in the 90s that was true, but it's not anymore. And if you wanted to increase your uh, filtration, we're in the mountains, there's not a lot of pollution outside, but you could get a Merv uh, 8 filter max. That would be like a green, non-see-through filter. This one you can see, you know, it's this is a Merv 6 or Merv 4 maybe. So, great, clean this. We're gonna put this in the soapy water and let that fill all the way up. And before I turn the water back on, we'll go ahead and close this out. Hopefully this works. I didn't bring, we don't have our like instruments with us, so I can't test the airflow, but we know that there wasn't any airflow before because obviously. And now that the HRV is working again, we're down below 900. Uh, it is drier now, which is one thing to note that I was warning us all about. The one other thing I'd say about the system is that it's all six inch pipe that's unsealed. Highly unlikely for the amount of runs and the amount of turns that it's taking that that pressure is like going all the way through the system. Probably the air is both leaking out beforehand uh, before it gets to the vents in the ceilings and in the walls. And also when it does, it's at a very low rate. Uh, low velocity, that is. So it's not helping to mix the air at all, which is why you would have ceiling fans. So so this is kind of what those consequences of just having an ERV or an HRV to clean the air and provide a healthy indoor environment. It doesn't really do a good job with some of the five factors we got just to review. Circulation, it's not doing that because it's not fast enough. Capture and filtration, we're only using this to capture bulk from the house. We're not. We're still exhausting from the bathrooms and from the kitchen I always exhaust from the kitchen with a one-way exhaust, but the bathrooms are one-way bath fans. Filtration is not happening because an ERV or HRV does not circulate air. It doesn't grab air, filter it, and put it back in the house. It only takes air from outside, inside, and throw it outside and bring air in from outside to replace. Uh, humidity control, not doing because HRV, that's, that's a big one. I would definitely recommend uh, to my client to replace, my client, my buddy, to replace this core with an ERV core if he cares which you might not, and that's okay. Uh, and then dilution air, we weren't getting, now we are, and now, unfortunately, he's gonna have to know that like, uh, that what the initial installer did not tell him, which is that you need to go down in your crawl space four times a year and clean these, these filters and then clean this core once a year. That's not gonna be like a fun maintenance job, but remember, life is maintenance. Maintenance is life, it's okay. Uh, pressure relief, this is a balanced system. As long as it's clean, it should be doing that too. Um, although we're not accounting for how airtight the house is with the kitchen exhaust fan and all the bath fans things like that. Okay, so that's like <laughs> big rant at the end, but that's all to say if you were confused by any of, of this in this video, watch lots of the other hundreds and hundreds of videos that we have on this topic. Um, please do comment below if you have other things to add about homes like this in a northern climate that use hydronic heating, which is, you know, has these weird side effects. Tune in next time. <laughs>